Today we're going to move on from graphs to equations, and that's, <clears throat> for me, good news for you. I, I don't know if you like that, but uh, let's get into why the title of our unit is kinematic. We are going to talk about kinematic equations. What we're after here for the kinematic equations is being able to describe motion. That's what kinematic is about. Like kinesthetics is something to do with motion. I don't know, it's a biology thing. Kinematics is movement. So it's the study of movement. We're going to use equations to do that. So the place where these equations come from is our velocity versus time graph, at least two of the three that we're going to use. So let's say our velocity versus time graph looks a little bit like this. Um, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, so hopefully it's not too surprising. And uh, if it is, well, too bad. So we start off with initial velocity, we end with the final velocity. Here's our graph. What we're going to do with that <clears throat> is just looking at the equation of this line. Well, before we do that, let's write down the two things that we can get from this graph. One, the slope of this graph is equal to the acceleration. And two, the area of this graph is equal to displacement, or our change in position. Those are the two things that we can get from this graph. And it's from those two things that we're going to be able to get two of our equations. Now, uh, the first one that we get is just from the equation of this line. Now, it's a straight line, so it's in that slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. But in this case, my y is, well, number one, my y is my final velocity. And the way we're going to write it is it equals my initial velocity, b, plus the acceleration times the time. Now, we see this in a different form as well. It's from our definition of acceleration. Acceleration is our change in velocity over time, where we know that change in velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity. If you, if you just feel like it, you can take it, plug this in here, rearrange it, uh, and get that equation. <clears throat> the second equation actually does not come directly from this graph. It takes this graph and it takes a graph for average velocity, uh, combines the two, and you come up with something. I'm not going to show you how we got this. If you really, 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 really want to know, uh, you can ask me and I can show you after school. I doubt that anybody cares that much. This one is velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2 times a times our change in position. And the nice thing about this one to remember is that we, um, we have no time in this equation. Sometimes it's nice to just not deal with time. And our third one comes from the area. I'm going to show that over here. So if we look at this area real quick, it has two shapes that we can deal with. The first shape It's this one. And here the delta x is equal to well, just the height v0 times time. That's pretty easy. The second one is this triangle where you have v minus v0 and then time on the bottom. For that our delta x is equal to 1 half v minus v0 times time. But these all have acceleration in we want our last equation to have acceleration in it. So we're going to take this, uh, the fact that we know that v minus v0 is equal to at. Let me just solve for it over here. And we'll plug that in up here. So we've got delta x equals 1 half. I'm just going to put that right in. at uh, times t. So the whole equation if we combine these two things to get our total displacement, 3, our change in position is equal to the first part, v0t, plus the second part, 1 half, and when we have a, when we have two t's times each other, it's at squared. These are our three kinematic equations. Okay. 
and as long as the acceleration is constant we can use them. And the nice thing about it is in this class we're really only going to see constant acceleration. Next year in AP Physics, which I hope you take, we will see non-constant accelerations. We have to use a little bit of calculus to deal with that. It's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but for now, we have these equations when we have constant acceleration. So we're going to look at a little bit of how we use these equations. We'll write them down again. Okay, V equals V0 plus AT. Uh, v squared equals V0 squared plus 2A sorry, 2a delta x and uh, delta x equals v0t plus one-half a t squared. <clears throat> now, looking at these, I just want to make sure we're on the same page with what everything is. v is final velocity. v0 is initial velocity. Acceleration is A. Make those all equal signs. Sorry. T is for time. The time that passes in the whole thing. And uh, delta X is our change in displacement. Delta x could also be written instead of that as x minus x zero. Final position minus initial position. Um, the reason that it's important to keep these things in mind uh, is that the problems where we're going to be using these equations are usually word problems. So you get a problem with some information, you have to figure out what you know, what you don't know, and how to get what you don't know. <clears throat> so for that, it's kind of a cheesy way to do it, but we have steps to solving these equations, and then we really want you guys to stick to these steps. So, steps to solving equations. First we have, what's the guess method? G-U-E-S-S. -S. G, it's our givens. You write down all your givens, so you say V equals whatever V equals, if that's what you're given. Um, the U is your unknowns. So identify what the problem is asking for. If it says find the time that it takes to do this, guess what? Your unknown is time. It's something like that. And we're going to see a lot of examples of this tomorrow. E is your equation. After you know what you're given, and after you know what you're looking for, you will be able to pick one of these equations uh, to be able to find your unknown. So you just pick it. You write that equation down. Um, the next thing is to solve. You solve for your unknown variable, uh, and then you substitute. To be honest, I don't care the order in which you do solve and substitute. I prefer putting in the numbers later. That's why I'm going to want you to do for the first few of these, if you're not that comfortable with algebra, I understand plugging in numbers and then moving stuff around until you solve for your final thing. But I do want you to do it algebraically first. Um, <clears throat> so every now and then you get a problem that doesn't give you the acceleration first. I'm going to do a star. And if our acceleration is not given, Um, we do the guess method. We do that for acceleration. And then we move on to the next thing. So that's our first step usually. Um, I'm actually not going to do an example on this tonight. I think that working through these in class and groups is going to do us a lot more good. So um, this is our basic introduction into kinematic equations. <clears throat>